So, um, good afternoon, everybody. So, my name is Ryan, Ryan Mangan, and I'm here today to talk to you about um, Kemp's Load Master on VMware vSphere. So, a bit of an introduction into uh, load balancing with VMware and cloud, multi-cloud workloads using Kemp's technologies. So, just a bit of a brief disclaimer before we start. Um, the opinions expressed in this presentation are solely the presenter and not necessarily Kemp Technologies or Cystic IT Solutions. So a little bit about me. Um, so I'm the CTO for Cystic IT Solutions in the UK. Um, I'm also the uh, author and blogger at Ryan Manga's IT blog. And just a bit of experience in Kemp, I've deployed over a thousand Kemp Low Masters. And I also train customers uh, globally. So that could be in Europe, Asia, uh, and in the Americas. Um, and specifically, my focus is in legal banking, insurance, and complex infrastructure. So, what does uh, Kemp do? Uh, everybody familiar with Kemp, Kemp Technologies? Anybody seen it before? Um, Kemp is a load balancing technology um, designed to allow you to scale applications in mass, also allowing you to deploy across multiple platforms and cloud. So, Kemp is an enabler, really, to accelerate the deployment of applications across multiple uh, environments and workloads. So as you can see, uh, when people are looking at multi-cloud or public and private cloud or transitioning from private to public, um, the Kemp uh, portfolio basically is a, a solution and an integration to the intersection of, of the cloud journey. And what I mean by that is they don't just low balance, they also have a central management platform allowing you to manage and control from a control plane multiple different types of low balances. So if you're using um, F5 low balances on premise and you're using Kemp in Azure, you are able to use the Kemp 360 uh, control plane, Kemp 360 Central, to actually manage then multiple application workloads across different platforms. The other thing as well when you're looking at Kemp technologies is <laughs> When you're uh, deploying applications on premise and then you need to, you've been asked to kind of move forward with a cloud strategy um, and you've only been given a short period of time, Kemp, uh, Kemp now allows you to deploy that application workload a lot quicker than it would do doing uh, complex integrations with core infrastructure. So using the uh, you know, linking in VMware with Azure um, is a longer project lifecycle than it would be to deploy Kemp's between the two using uh, DNS load balancing. And as you can see there, the application experience fabric allows you to um, deploy across multiple different cloud, public cloud, private cloud fabrics. Very simple uh, work case, uh, workload, migrating to the cloud, as you can see here. Um, you've got a private cloud and a public cloud. Kemp allows you to deploy load balances at either side and transition the application workloads between the two. So you could be running on-premise or private cloud, and then you can add the additional uh, web servers, endpoints to the other, um, and then basically have load balancing between the two private and public clouds. So in simple terms, what we're going to do is we're going to run through getting started with Kemp, deploying them in VMware, and then talk about obviously some of the kind of prerequisites you need to be aware of. So first thing on VMware is you need to be aware of is the port group settings. Before you can do anything with uh, the Kemp Load Master, you need to make sure that you configure the port group settings on the network for VMware. The second step would be to then deploy and import the OVF file, which you should be all familiar with appliances anyway, and then deploying the load balancer, licensing the load balancer, and then basically getting, uh, configuring either DHCP or static IP addresses. And then finally, uh, ensuring you've set a static MAC address so that your license doesn't fail when you vMotion from one host to another. So prerequisites for deploying a Kemp within VMware. A Kemp uh, VMware Virtual Load Master Guest must include a minimum of two virtual CPUs, uh, two gig of RAM and 16 gig of disk space. More the better, uh, but that's the minimum requirements. The um, second thing is, as I mentioned, the com uh, configuring the custom port group, making sure that the changes uh, are set to support the Kemp Load Master. Um, and obviously that what that means is configuring for transmits and then uh, set and no notify uh, set on the switch as well for that port group. So what I would recommend is rather than deploying a whole new network and a port group, is cloning an existing port group and then basically calling it underscore LB and then setting them security settings required. Um, if you want to know more about that, uh, just go onto my blog and there's a full document talking looking at distributed switches and standard networking. So all of the information required for network setup on Kemp is in that uh, blog post. 
So deploying the low master, getting back into it to deploy and download uh, your uh, OVF, you go to kemptechnologies.com slash try, follow the instructions and download that OVF. Once you've deployed um, the virtual machine or the appliance with all of the required settings, ensure you set the MAC address um, so that it doesn't change if it migrates between different uh, hosts. Then power on the virtual machine. You're not over yet. Once you power on the virtual machine, you need to decide whether it's going to be operating on a static uh, MAC address or a DHCP. Sorry, a static IP or a DHCP. Typically, it's static, so you'll need to go into the console, log in, and change that so that you can access it via the web panel. Once you've done all the network settings and the Kemp is loaded, it will tell you to navigate to the IP address of the, uh, of the load balancer, and that will be HTTPS and then the IP address you've assigned if it's static. When you're logging on and going into the web panel, um, you will then need to first have a Kemp ID. Once you've registered a Kemp ID, which is an email address and a password, you are then able to license. So if you've already placed an order with Kemp Technologies, you'll have an order ID. If you haven't, you'll get a 30-day trial. Um, one of the things you can do if you haven't received, ordered yet and you want to do a trial or you're in the process of ordering is you just log on, get your trial. The loadmaster will function for 30 days. You just need to remember to license it within 30 days. If you haven't licensed it within 30 days, it'll stop working. Uh, and as I said, you're entering the Kemp ID and username and password, if you have an order ID. And then also at the bottom, if you have HTTPS proxies, like a Z scaler or something different, uh, you'll need to ensure that you enter that in there as well for it to authenticate with, uh, with the internet. Um, point to note, if you're working in any complex environments of uh, off network, military, nuclear, or things like water sources, you are able to lo license um, the load balancer offline using a special key. So once you're into the web panel, you're inside the load master, what you need to do is basically then go and double check all your settings. So first of all, we're going to go into the network interface, which we just set up on VMware, and double check everything, make sure the MTU is what we need it to be. Um, and then one very important point is to set the host name. The default host name for all load balancers is an L1, L100. Um, if you deploy six or seven of these, the challenge you'll have is it'll all be called L100. So you need to set a host name for each individual load master. That's also important when you're deploying a high available, so two, active passive deployment, because obviously you need to identify which is A and which is B in an active passive. Or again, if you're deploying in a cluster where you may have up to eight, you need to identify which unit is which. Um, and then further to that is when, you, um, when you're adding real services and workloads, you also need to ensure that you've configured the DNS servers and the, F um, and the name servers. The reason why you need to do that is because when you're deploying uh, real servers, it will identify the FQDN as well as the IP address. So again, it's just so that you understand and you know wh what device is which. Just a little bit of um, naming convention. So once you've done all the network settings and you're all happy with that, you're ready to start uh, deploying virtual services. Um, you've got two options. If it's a custom application or it's something bespoke, you can go and do this manually. Or alternatively, you, um, Kemper provided a lot of uh, templates. So for various different things, from medical, Microsoft, um, VMware, SAP, you name it, there's various different templates out there. You simply download and import the template, um, add the real servers, and you're ready to go, load balancing. So quite simply, you can have a, a load master spin up in about 15 minutes, deploy the template, and be in high availability mode within another 10. So within half an hour, you can have uh, load balancing working in your environment. That concludes the real summary of deploying a Kemp load master in, um, in VMware. Any questions? Brilliant. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, go on. Go for it. Are you able to automate the configuration? Yes, you can. So you can actually... Uh, so, sorry, just say your question again. Are you able to automate the configuration? Are you able to automate the configuration of deploying a Kemp? So yes, there is the ability to use uh, PowerShell API, and using the Kemp 360 Central, you can also do some of the deployment and automation within that as well. So there's multiple. So if you wanted to deploy uh, the configuration, you obviously have to download from template. But as soon as the Kemp's there, you can then uh, inject the configuration using PowerShell. Is there any integration with VMware NSX? Good question. Uh, I'd have to double check. I know there was previously, but there's been some significant changes in the stack, so I'd have to double check that for you. 
no, you wouldn't need to. You can do that with outside of NSX. You, um, you, you don't need to integrate it. Uh, one last one. Uh, integration with um, Kubernetes. Is there any? So so integration with Kubernetes, yeah, so there is some further integration coming, but you are able to load balance certain um, container-based applications. Brilliant, thank you very much, guys.